Now I'm going to discuss some cases. These cases came from my clinical practice, and I've merged a few different clinical presentations together into one story to de-identify the cases and for purposes of making various teaching points. Case 1. Seven-year-old with long history of inattention, hyperactivity, and emotional dysregulation. Parents reported his four-year-old sister can organize and plan more than he can. He had a medical history significant for seasonal allergies, a father with ADHD, and he was currently taking no medications. After a thorough review of symptoms, teacher report, and parent report, I diagnosed him with ADHD. I discussed with the parents that stimulant medication is the standard of care for the treatment of ADHD. We discussed the options for behavioral therapy, importance of exercise, and a healthy diet. Parents were hesitant to start stimulant medication as the father had a significant side effect in the past when he had taken methylphenidate as a child. Mom asked if starting an omega-3 or any other supplements could also help with symptoms. I agreed that an omega-3 supplement could be helpful and recommended one gram per day, of which at least 600 milligrams should be from EPA. We then discussed the risks, benefits, and alternatives of starting broad-spectrum micronutrients. We titrated as follows, with the aim of getting to nine pills per day, as used in the MADI trial. On day 10 of starting broad-spectrum micronutrients, parents reported some improvement. He seemed not to get as angry as easily. On day 15, the patient started complaining of stomach aches, so we reduced the dose to three capsules in the morning, two at noon, and two at dinner. On day 30, parents were proven a significant improvement, no more stomach aches. Of note, I increased the dose more slowly than what was done in clinical trials to help with tolerability and to be able to detect what dose may be causing side effects if they emerge, which in this case they did. The next case is of a 19-year-old female presenting with emotional dysregulation for several years. She had been diagnosed with ADHD and ODD at age 10. She was diagnosed with PMDD last year after describing high amounts of irritability prior to menses. She currently is not taking any medication given previous side effects with stimulants. Main concerns were irritability, poor sleep, and a diet high in ultra-processed foods. I discussed with the patient the data showing improvement in children and adults with ADHD using broad-spectrum micronutrients. The patient was very interested in this approach. However, she was concerned with the number of capsules required with the daily essential nutrients product. I discussed with her that although the two RCTs for pediatric ADHD use the daily essential nutrients product, a newer version requiring fewer pills, EMPower Plus Advance, has been studied in patients with PMS, of which a portion also had PMDD. I explained that for adults, the dose of the nutrients in EMPower Plus Advance is below the upper tolerable limit except for nicotinamide. We discussed other potential treatment options, including starting an SSRI. The patient elected to start a six-week trial of EMPower Plus Advanced. Patient reported at two-week follow-up some improvement with focus and attention, but a large improvement with mood, decreased irritability, and improvement in overall mood regulation. In subsequent follow-up at three months, the patient improved improvement in PMDD symptoms. Case 3. This last case is a 27-year-old ADHD and mood dysregulation. He's currently prescribed dextroamphetamine slash amphetamine XR 15 milligrams. He states that the medication helps a great deal with focus, but that when he takes it, he feels more anxious and irritable. We discussed risks, benefits, and alternatives to the broad-spectrum micronutrients, and that although the two formulas have been studied in three randomized control trials, neither formula has an FDA-approved indication. We discussed the difference in the two formulas and what studies have been done in children and adults. Patient agreed to a trial. Over the course of four days, we titrated up the dose to four capsules three times daily. On day seven, he reported an improvement in his mood. On day 10, he reported feeling agitated and said, everything bothers me. As this fit the description and time frame of potentiation, I decreased the dose of the medication to dextroamphetamine and amphetamine XR 10 milligrams per recommendation of the manufacturer to decrease medication dosage by a quarter upon signs of potentiation. During a phone check-in two days later, the patient reported an improvement in focus and mood regulation. About two weeks later again, the patient reported feeling easily irritated, and again, the dose was decreased, this time to 5 milligrams daily. A couple weeks later, the patient, during a follow-up visit, reported feeling quite well, calmer, lifted mood, and still with good focus. He then decided to stop the stimulant medication. 
However, seven days later, he called and stated that he was making careless mistakes at work and having a hard time driving and wanted to resume the dextroamphetamine slash amphetamine XR five milligrams. This case again illustrates what I've noted in my clinical practice. In many cases, a broad spectrum micronutrients are not a replacement for stimulants, but in many patients could help with mood and emotional regulation. This also reinforces the point that psychotropic medications can be potentiated with combined with broad spectrum micronutrients and therefore expert guidance is needed for cross titration. Key points. Broad spectrum micronutrients amplify the effect of stimulant medications. Therefore, close monitoring and expert guidance are needed when they are started alongside psychotropic medication as dose reductions are typically required. Supplementation with broad spectrum micronutrients often improve mood regulation.